Welcome again to Cake Dragon Vids and another teaching on how Satan shall come imitating the coming of Christ. Today's subject will be called Satan's Chariots. You know, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, we read about, about four living creatures inside this uh, highly polished bronze vehicle. You know, even as they move, the wheels, the turning wheels move with them. You know, also, when Satan comes, he would also have his vehicles. So, uh, we're going to start this study with the book of uh, Jeremiah in chapter 4. And before we, we start, let's, let's, let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Father, we give you glory and honor for everything that you do. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to understand your word. Father, we give you thanks for the word we're about to receive. In the name of Yeshua, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 4. We'll see how Satan imitates, will shall come imitating the coming of Christ. And I'll start with verse 5. It says, Declare ye in Judah, and publish in Jerusalem, and say, Blow ye the trumpet. Remember, there's seven trumpets. Uh, Jesus comes at the last trump, as it is written there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Satan arrives at the sixth trump. And it says, Blow ye the trumpet in the land, in the earth, the erets. Cry, gather together, and, as, and say, Assemble yourselves, and let us go into the defense city. In other words, to the fortified cities. Verse 6, set up the standard toward Zion. That, you know, Jerusalem is the place, you know, of, of the end times. That is the focus. And uh, that's why it's significant that our, even our president called it, uh, officially called it the capital of, uh, of uh, Israel, putting the focus on Jerusalem. Set up the standard toward Zion. Retire. Stay not, in other words, uh, be strong. Stay not, don't stand. For I will bring evil, ra, the word is ra, bad. You know, what's worse than Satan? Evil, ra, bad. From the north. And a great destruction. And who is this that comes from the north? Verse 7. The lion is come up from the thicket, and the destroyer, that is the word shahath, which means the ruiner, the one that decays, the one that destroys, in other words, Satan, the destroyer. And notice who he comes up, up unto. The lion has come up from the thicket. Why? Because Satan comes as a lion. And you know, that's another study. Satan the lion, okay? As a roaring lion, he seeketh one to devour. We know that Jesus is the true lion. In other words, Satan comes imitating the coming of Christ. The true lion. The destroyer, that is Satan. That is another name of Satan. Of the Gentiles. Of who? Of uh, the Jews? You know, we're talking about Nebuchadnezzar. No. We're talking about the Gentiles, the whole nations. The destroyer of the nations. We mean, we're talking about Satan. Is on his way. He shall come. He is gone. Forth from his place. In other words, he's going to be kicked out of his place. Which is in heaven. His li right now he has a limited spot in heaven. To make thy land, earth. The word is earth. It is the whole earth. Desolate. In other words, he's the abomination of desolation. And the city shall be laid waste without an inhabitant. Verse 8. For this gird you with sackcloth. Lament and howl, and they will lament as as the only as for the only begotten Son. Why? Because they're going to realize that they have lost the true Jesus when the real Jesus shows up. For the for, for this gird you and sackcloth, lament and howl, for the fierce anger of the Lord is not turned back from us. Verse nine. It shall come to pass as the day says the Lord that the heart of the king shall perish. And the heart of the princes and the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. 
And the word uh, wonder is the word tama in the Hebrew. And it means to, to be in co uh, consterna uh, cons consternation, which means uh, to be expecting something. Yes, they're, <laughs> they're going to be expecting Jesus, but the false Jesus is the one that's going to show up first. The Bible says here uh, in verse 10, in other words, like it says in the book of Micah, chapter 1, verse 12, they expected good, but bad came down. I mean, they expected Jesus, but, you know, Satan showed up. You know, that day would not be day for them, it would be night. You know, as it is written there in the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. And verse 10 says, Then said I, our Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people. Why? Why would God allow them to be deceived? It says, and people in Jerusalem saying, you shall have peace where there sh the sword reaches unto the soul. In other words, God allowed the people to be deceived. Why? Because they love not the truth. And because they love not the truth, God shall send them a spirit of strong delusion to believe a lie. In other words, when Satan comes, they are going to believe a lie. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. It says, and at that time, it be said to this people and to Jerusalem, a dry wind, in other words, hot wind. Wind in the Bible represents false doctrine in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 14. So that's what hot waves represent. You know, and remember last year there was a hot a heat wave called Lucifer. Well, that's symbolic of this wind. Hot air of the high places in the wilderness. And the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people. Not too fat. There's not an air-conditioned wind. In other words, it's a heat wind. It's hot air. False doctrine. Nor to cleanse. Verse 12. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now will I give sentence against them. Look at verse 13. Here's, what, here's why we came here. It says, Behold, he, in other words, the destroyer, uh, the Shahab, not Nebuchadnezzar, Satan, you know, the, the true destroyer. So Nebuchadnezzar was only a type. Behold, he shall come up as the clouds. He, even Satan will come in the Jesus will come in the clouds. Satan will come in the clouds. And his chariots, you know, these chariots in the, in the Hebrew are Merkava, Merkava. You know, as we, you know, we were, we were created in God's image. You know, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, we were created in the image of God and the angels, Elohim. But, you know, uh, we don't have wings. That means the angels don't have wings. So what are these wings? There's, in other words, you know, when Ezekiel and Revelation, I mean, Ezekiel and John were describing them, of course, anything that will fly would have to have wings. So... These chariots are vehicles, you know, and uh, they're flying vehicles. You know, yes, these are Satan's chariots. And behind them, there's good angels and there's bad angels. Even as there's there, the car, there's many cars that we use. We, we, have to, we, we need vehicles to move around. They need vehicles to, to, to move around. You know, even as there's good drivers and bad drivers, well, there's good angels and bad, drive, bad angels. They drive these vehicles. So the good angels have vehicles, and even Satan's angels have vehicles. His chariot shall be as a whirlwind, you know, whirlwind, because it whirls. It turns like a flying disc. His horses are swifter than eagle. A horse swifter than eagle? You know, an eagle, when it dashes, it reaches upwards of 100, feet, 100 miles per hour. You know, a horse, you know, uh, <laughs> about 30 miles an hour, brought out speed. You know, uh, wow. In other words, we're talking about supernatural. Supernatural. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. Okay? So we're talking about a high-speed vehicle. And, uh, and let's look at, uh, at the book of Isaiah in chapter 5. And remember, these are supernatural angels. Isaiah chapter 5, and let's start with verse 20. It says, Woe well unto them, they call evil good, and good evil. They put darkness for light, and light for darkness. 
that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Uh, when Jesus came, you know, the, the so-called church community, you know, the, the religious sect, they called him what? The devil. They said that he had the devil. Beelzebub there in the book of Luke chapter 11. They called him that he had a devil there in the book of John chapter 7 verse 20. And also in the book of Luke chapter 7. It says, Revelation, but, but the, the, ironic, the uh, irony here is that when Jesus came, they called him a devil. But when the devil comes, Satan himself, they will call him Jesus. They will all whore after the beast. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 8. And Revelation chapter 17 and verse 8. Whose names are not written in the Lamb of the Book, in the Book of the Lamb. Verse 21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes. In other words, that go by their doctrine. By their own doctrines. They think they're smarter than God. They think they don't need to use God's word. Oh, we don't need to study the book of Revelation. Because there's no use. Because we're going to be gone. <laughs> it says, Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes. And prudent in their own sight. That's why the Bible says there in Proverbs 3 verse 5. To trust in the Lord. Well, you know, praise God. And always acknowledge Him. Trust in Him. Lead not unto your own understanding. Verse 22. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strong drink to mingle, strong drink. You know, that's where we get the word Babylon. Babylon comes from the word mixed, uh, when we uh, get co when confusion that comes by mixing. In other words, when you mix God's word with doctrines of men, you're going to get all confused. Babel. In verse 23, which justify the wicked for reward. In other words, Donation? Oh yeah, give me a donation. Oh, you can do everything you want. You're going straight to heaven. One say it always did. Which justify the wicked for reward, and take away take away the righteous of the righteous from him. And true righteousness, of course, as it is written there, in, uh, Philippians three nine, it says that it's faith in Jesus Christ. Right? Okay. In verse twenty four says, therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble and the flame consumed the chaff. So their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as a dust. Because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts. They don't want anything to do with God's word. And despise the word of the Holy One of Israel. As it is rendered in the book of Hosea, chapter 8, verse 12. I wrote to them the things of my law, but they were counted as a strange thing. They despise God's word. And rather than listening to God's word, they take heed to doctrines and traditions of men, which make void the word of God. And verse 25 says there, Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and smitted them in the hills, of, and did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst, street, in the midst of the streets. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. You know, he's still there with his hand stretched out. He wants to forgive you. He wants to redeem you before it's too late. The Bible says here that in verse 26, And he will lift up an ensign, in other words, a flag or a sign, to the nations from far off, and will hiss. What, what animal makes a hiss? You know, this is only found in King James. What animal makes a hiss? A snake. In other words, when you see that word hiss, his in the Old Testament pretty much is talking about the Antichrist coming. The snake, Satan, and them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. These fallen angels will come swift, swiftly right on their vehicles. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 12 verse 31, Now is judgment upon this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And he will come, and his angels will come with him. The book of Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 through 9. Verse 28. It says, in verse 29, None shall be weary. See? None shall stumble. In other words, we're not talking about, we're not talking about men. We're not talking about natural men. We're talking about fallen angels, supernatural. You know, because all men, no matter how muscular they are, no matter how fit they are, they get weary. And neither will they stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. What kind of man will not sleep? Well, an angel, a fallen angel. Neither shall they girdle with uh, their loins be loosed, nor the latchet of their shoes be broken. Verse 28. 
whose arrows are sharp and their bows bend. Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint and their wheels like whirlwind. In other words, their wheels that whirl, their vehicles that whirl as the whirlwind, as the hurricane. Praise God. Satan's coming is compared as a hurricane. That's why a lot of Satanists and Luciferians like that lyrics from the Hell Bells, right? Which says uh, uh, a, a rolling thunder, a power, uh, or pouring rain. You know, Satan's going to come like a hurricane or, or something like that. <laughs> because Satan is going to come as a hurricane. It says, uh, the roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. You know, is Satan imitating the coming of Christ? He's going to come saying he's the lion again. But we leave that for the study, okay? Praise God. Okay, let's go on to uh, Joel in chapter 2. Joel, capítulo 2. Joel, chapter 2. <laughs> blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Where in Jerusalem again? The blow the trumpet. Remember, Jesus comes at the seventh, the last, the final one. Escatos in the Greek. You know, the, the, the last, the ultimate to the to the end. The seventh. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And Satan comes at the sixth. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain in Jerusalem. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. Verse 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and a thick darkness. In other words, when... Satan is released, you know, I mean, uh, and releases those angels from the bottomless pit. It will bring darkness upon the whole earth. That's why when uh, we see these volcanoes uh, erupt and they bring a bunch of smoke, it should remind you of the smoke of the locusts. It should remind you of the smoke that will darken the whole earth. It says, in the day of darkness and the gloominess, a day of clouds and a thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and strong, there had not been ever the like. In other words, they're not from this earth. They're not from this world. I mean, they're fallen angels, a people that we that we have never seen the like. And in other words, these people are not found in this earth. There has not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Verse 3, a fire devoured before them, and behind them a flame burning. The land is the, is, is the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. In other words, they bring desolation wherever they go, and nothing shall escape them. Verse 4, the appearance of them is the appearance of horses. In other words, many and powerful, and as horsemen shall they, shall they run. Verse 5, like the noise of the chariots, there it is, Makava, those vehicles. In other words, they're going to come with those chariots. And many of those uh, people that believe in ancient uh, aliens, well, they're going to be full. The fact is that those ancient aliens were fallen angels that, that came down and seduced women. You know, and uh, they brought their technology to... Uh, to uh, to civilization and advance them. That's why they, you find pyramids almost in every in every continent because they came from those gods and they were worshipped as gods but they were not gods, they were fallen angels and they seduced women and those and those and those and they, they become giants, those giants were man-eaters that's why a lot of those pyramids like especially in in, uh, in, uh, in Mexico and South America you found you find a lot of disembodied bodies because they would cut off the head and they wouldn't like to eat the head. Okay, praise God. And there they are going to come again. Those fallen angels will be loosed again. And that's the return of the fallen angels, like the noise of the chariots on the tops of the mountains. And and that's why. Why do you think the Illuminati and and the news and you know, even now Russia and the Pope, they, they want to publicize it. Even NASA want to publicize that they, they found a, a, an earth that looks exactly like this earth. And so they can publicize this, this theory that, that we come from aliens. 
In other words, they're preparing the world also for this, for these uh, these chariots that are coming. And on the top of the mountain shall they leap, they leap, literally leap from mountain to mountain. We're talking about super advanced vehicles that will leap from mountain to mountain. And shall they leap like the noise of the flame of the fire and devour the stubble as they strong people set on battle and array. In other words, they're armed and they're set for battle are you. Do you have the uh, do you have the gospel armor? Are you are, are you uh, prepared for battle? Before their face, the people shall be much pained. In other words, uh, toral or dance. All faces shall gather blackness. In other words, they're going to be illuminated, but in a way of anxiety. You know, that they're flushed with anxiety. That's what the word means. In uh, verse 7, they shall run like mighty men, they shall climb in the wall like men of war, they shall march every one in his way, then they shall not break their ranks. In other words, they will even have captains. Neither shall one thrust another, they shall walk every one in this path, and when they shall fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded, they shall not be stopped. What kind of man, when you stab him, they're not going to die? We're talking about supernatural men, fallen angels. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up and upon the houses. They shall enter in the windows like a thief. You see, even as Jesus comes as a thief, they will come as a thief. But the thing is that Jesus does not come as a thief upon everybody. Only upon those that are not watching, Revelation 3.3, 3, and only upon those that are in darkness, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Okay, praise God. Let's move on. Let's read more about it. Let's go to the book of Haggai. About more about these chariots. The book of Haggai. Haggai. Haggai in chapter chapter 2, verse 20. And again the word of the Lord came unto Haggai. Uh, that means festive. Like some, something to celebrate. <laughs> okay, in four, and four is the number of creation, and 20, 20 is the number of redemption. And I also should remind you of the 24 elders, then Revelation. The 24th day of the month, saying, verse 21, speak to Zerubbabel, in other words, born in confusion. Like me and you, when we came to this earth, we were born in confusion, but we came out of confusion, okay? When we met the Lord, met the truth. Because you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Governor of Judah saying, I will shake the heaven and the earth. Remember when Jesus said, the heaven and the earth, I mean the heaven shall be shaken. And those like a tree and those fallen angels will come down. Like in Revelation chapter 6. Then in Matthew 24 and verse 29 and verse, 20, and verse 22 says, And I will overthrow the throne of the kingdom. And will destroy the strength of the kingdom. And the heathen, you know, the word heathen is goy. It, uh, it could be translated as Gentiles, but also it could also mean a troop of animals or a flight of locusts. So the word goy there, not only could it mean heathen, but it could also mean a tribe of locusts. In other words, the locust army. And I will overcome their chariots. See, God will overthrow their chariots. And those that ride in them. And the horses and their riders shall come down. The word come down there is literally descent uh, from heaven. Literally to go downwards. In other words, they, those riders are going to descend from heaven. That's what it's saying. Everyone by sword of his brother. Yes, and uh, even your own family would, uh, would deliver you to Satan thinking he's Jesus. In verse 23, In that day, says the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shial, Shaltiel, says the Lord, and will make thee a signet, a sign, a mark, a seal, you know, a, a, a signature as a ring, ownership, that means you're God's ownership. For I have chosen thee, says the Lord of hosts, and you have to have that seal of God. Which is the spirit of truth. You know in the book of uh, John chapter 15 verse 26. You know the seal of, which is that Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. 
you know, when you are sealed unto the day of redemption, right? As the, uh, let's go to the book of uh, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter nine. Talk a little bit more about that seal. Revelation nine. And here we find the fifth trumpet. The fifth trump is associated with Satan's advent. When he is kicked out from heaven, that big show that he's going to display, uh, coming uh, as the invitating the coming of Christ. You know, all, mostly all these videos that I'm putting out is about the fifth trump. You know, Satan coming invitate, with a rainbow and a white horse. You know, all those, you know, uh, videos. You know, uh, Satan coming, imitating the, the coming of Christ in the clouds like a thief. You know, as lightning from heaven. You know, all that is the fifth trump. In other words, his spectacular coming, fooling the whole world, thinking that he was saying that he's, that he's Jesus. Of course, when he arrives, that is the sixth trump. Okay, so here we're describing the fifth trump, them descending from heaven, imitating the coming of Christ. Revelation chapter 9 and verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star, a star symbolic of the angel, Revelation 120. And that means a star falling, that means an angel falling, a fallen angel. From heaven unto the earth, unto the earth. Even as Jesus saw Satan fall down from heaven like a lightning, like a lightning, imitating the coming of Christ. Because even Jesus says, that uh, as a lightning that shining from east to west, so shall the, the, the coming of the Son of Man be, right? So he's coming imitating the coming of Christ. And it says there, And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, because he is the king of the bottomless pit. There in Revelation 9, 11, we're going to read. You know, Satan in the, the bottomless pit. Where's the bottomless pit at? The bottomless pit is, is in hell. Where's hell? The, according to the book of Luke chapter 16, it's on the other side of the gulf, the other side of heaven, that's hell. And how do I know that the bottom spit is there? Because the Bible says there in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, when the word hell there it means the bottom spit, where those angels are locked up, those angels that sinned and left their first habitation. Okay? Look it up. The word is uh, Tartaros, I think, which means the bottom spit, the depths of hell. The deepest part of, of hell. And verse 2 says, And he opened the bottom pit, there rose a smoke out of the pit, the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened. In other words, they come to deceive, bring darkness to this world, by reason of the smoke of the pit. Verse 3. And there came out of the smoke of the locusts upon the earth. They come to where? To the earth. They're not from the earth. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. In other words, they inject you with venom to dissolve your, your foundation, the backbone. In other words, your foundation better be Christ, or else you're going to be fooled. Verse 4, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass. Grass is symbolic of man, Isaiah chapter 40. And, and the earth, neither any green thing, nor the any, any tree, but only those men. So we're talking about men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. That's why it is very important for you, as it is written there in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 18, that the word of God should be your mark on your forehead and on your right hand. What should be your mark? The truth, the word. And if you're not sealed with the truth, the spirit of truth, you're sealed with the spirit of error. First, first, uh, first John chapter 4, verse 6. So what is the opposite of the spirit of truth? The spirit of error. In other words, if you don't have the truth, you have doctrines of men, traditions of men, which equals 666. Verse, uh, paradosis. Verse 5. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. In other words, when these angels arrive on the sixth trump, you know, they have the power to torment as scorpions for five months. So how long are they going to be here? Five months. It says, and the torment was as the torment of scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days, as it is written there, Daniel chapter 2 verse 41, the days of these angels, 
and uh, the day these days shall be shortened, as Jesus said there in Matthew 24, 22. What days? These, uh, the days of the fallen angels. In other words, Satan will rise. The sixth trump. You know, praise God. The half of the tribulation, when Satan will rise, the half of the tribulation. Afterwards, the second half will be shortened. The days of the fallen angels will be shortened to, to uh, five months. Okay? And in those days shall men seek death. And shall, oh, I'm going to cut my head off. Well, that totally debunks that theory, right? <laughs> and shall not find it. And shall desire to die, and they shall flee from them. You know, because this is spiritual death. Once, these, once Satan arrives with these angels, the only three that will die will be uh, there in Revelation chapter 2, Antipas, and the two witnesses there in Revelation chapter 11. Okay? We'll talk about those, that later. That, that'll be not diff a different message. In other words, what will justify Satan to kill the two witnesses and Antipas? And Satan coming and imitating the coming of Christ. Okay, verse 7. The shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared unto, unto battle. In other words, many and powerful. And the heads were, they were crowns. In other words, they're going to come wearing crowns. Like gold. And their faces were the faces of men. Why? Because we were created in their image. And verse 8, And they had hair the hair of a woman. In other words, their authority was, un, I mean, a man was, was over them. You know, their authority was man. The man of sin, Satan. Okay? And their teeth were the teeth of lions. Imitating the coming of Christ. In verse 9, And the breastplate as the breastplate of iron. And the sound of their wings, there it is again. The sound of their wings was the sound of chariots. You know, praise God. The wings, the, the if they had, if, if, if they, in other words, with uh, John, you know, they lived in the time of uh, buggies, you know, of, of wheelbat buggies. So anything that uh, would fly, it must have wings. And their wings was as the sound of chariots. Of many horses running to battle. It's describing these chariots. In other words, these what we call UFOs. In Christ, there's nothing identified. They're going to come in these vehicles. Verse 10. And they had tails like unto scorpions. And there were stings in the tails. And their power was to hurt men five months. When they arrive at the sixth trump, they, have, they will, will be here for five months. That's it. Okay, and verse 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, no, or the, the angel that was given the key of the bottomless pit. Who's this angel? Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is about in destruction. And, but in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Look it up in the Strongs. It even says there in the Strongs, a, a Greek number 623 means the destroyer, meaning Satan. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11. There we go. <laughs> Daniel, chapter 11. And let's start at verse 36. And remember Daniel 11, you know, when it says the king of the north, it's not talking about a specific person, a specific entity. Because all those roles change. Even the king of the south, all those roles change. You know, uh, it's, not, it's talking about a road. When you read about the king of the north, it's talking about a road, not a person. A road. You know, and uh, as we're reading, sometimes it's Russia. And uh, sometimes it's played by the king of the United States, even himself. You know, and here, and from 36 through 45, the final king of the north, of course, will be Satan. Verse 36. And the king shall do according to his will. See, even the he goat, even the superpower, the willful king will now be Satan. He's the true he goat now. Praise God. Even the he goat was a rogue. But now we see it turn into Satan, the full manifestation of the he goat. In other words, we saw types, but now we see the real thing. And verse 36 says, And the king shall do according to his will. In other words, the willful king. And he shall exalt himself 
and magnify himself above every God. Now when he's coming saying he's Jesus, the name that is above all names, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of God, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that it is determined shall be done. Verse 37. Neither shall he regard the God Elohim of his fathers. Why? Because he's coming saying he's God. He's, the Bible says there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, he's going to sit in the temple of God, showing himself to be God, magnify himself above every God. In other words, calling himself Jesus. He's, nor the desire of woman. And we're not talking about a natural man. We're talking about a supernatural man. An angelic being. Somebody who doesn't have need of woman. A lot of people say, no, right there it says the Antichrist is going to be homosexual. Oh yeah, he's going to be coming and saying, oh, cut your head off. No, he's coming he's Satan. He's coming and saying, he's Jesus. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers. No, the desire, it says, a woman. He's supernatural, he's an angelic. Okay? No regard any God. There we have deity. You know, because he's gonna because he's gonna rise himself above all. Oh yeah, for he shall magnify himself above all. In other words, he's gonna call him till Jesus, the name that is above all names. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. There the word God is El Eleha, which is not necessarily the name of Jehovah or God. It's little God, little G, okay? The God of forces. In other words, these fallen angels. He's going to honor them. A God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold. In other words, unprecedented. This never happened. He's going to honor him with gold. Even as Jesus comes giving presents, giving rewards, giving gifts, Satan will come imitating the coming crap. He will also give rewards. Look at this. And shall he honor with gold and silver, with precious stones and pleasant things. He's going to say, oh, my faithful servant. You know, here's a reward, a crown of gold. Verse 39. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God. You know, he's going to have many of those false gods, many fallen angels, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and shall cause them to rule over many, and shall divide the land. Doesn't that sound familiar? When Jesus comes also in Matthew chapter 20, chapter uh, 25, verse 23, it says, because you've been faithful with few, and now you'll be ruler of many. In other words, you're going you're to be given land. So Satan himself would also imitate the coming of Christ. He's going to give land also. Jesus gives land. Jesus gives crown. Jesus gives gold. Satan's going to give gold. Satan's going to give land. Like Jesus, he's coming imitating the coming of Christ. Don't you see it? It's plain right there. Verse 40. It says, and at that time of the end, when? At the end. We're talking about the end times. We're not talking about, uh, oh, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, Babylon of old or, you know, or any of those kings. We're talking about end times. All history was a type. And at that time of the end, the king of the south, you know, uh, I believe that the king of the south, you know, starting verse 5, was, uh, was, it had to do with Islamic extremism. You know, and, uh, and some other people, they believe it's the king of uh, the Christian nation. The king of the Christian nation? Who's the king of the Christian nation? Well, that's Jesus. <laughs> Could it be talking about Jesus? <laughs> the king of the south shall push at him and the king of the north. That's the Antichrist. That's Satan. The king of the north will finally be Satan. See, all these types led to the real thing. You know, we had Russia playing the king of the north. Even the United States playing the king of the north. Even the Higo playing the king of the north. But now, now ultimately the king of the north is Satan himself. The Antichrist. And the king of the north, meaning the Antichrist, shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots. There it is again, his chariots, his flying vehicles, UFOs. And with his horsemen and with many ships, with many what? Ships, 
In other words, flying ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overthrow and pass over. He shall enter also into the glorious land. And many countries shall be overthrown. He, where he's going to enter? Jerusalem. He's going to come saying he's Jesus. But these shall escape out of his hand even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. You know, Edom is Russia. Why? Because he has other plans for them. Remember the battle of Haman God? You know, that's what he has planned. You know, Ezekiel 38 and 39, you can read, read that about. Okay, verse 40. And the, the, chief, the children of Ammon, that's Jordan. And, and of course, Moab represents the Arabs. And he's, in other words, he's going to be the God of everybody. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries. The land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and the silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. The Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. Oh, all of them will bow down to him. He will be the God of all of them. Because why? Because even their gods are coming with Satan. The gods that came down and they worshiped like like uh, in, uh, like in the ancient Aztecs and all them, those gods, uh, Quasicoro, you know, those ancient gods, well, they were gonna, they're going to come with Satan. They were gods that came down and they got locked up, but they were going to be released. That's why it's called the return of the fallen angels. But tidings of the east, of the north, shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with a great fury to destroy and order to make, to make many. In other words, he's going to put many uh, uh, of us in prison. But don't be prepared to take what you're going to say. For God will give us the voice. God will speak through us. And we're not supposed to premeditate because the Holy Spirit uh, uh, will, 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 will come out of us. You know, and uh, as it is written there in the book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 15. You know, and that's going to angry, anger Satan. Because we're going to publish truth. And we're going to be speaking in other tongues that we have never spoke before. That Pentecostal tongue. And verse 45. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountains. So he, where is he going to set up headquarters? And Jerusalem. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. He will be destroyed. You know, that's all we have for today, but let me just read one more. As you as even as God has vehicles there in Psalm 68, 17, look, it says the chariots of God, you know, the word chariot means vehicles. The word vehicles, uh re 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 in the means vehicles. The vehicles of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. In other words, the angels ride those vehicles. And Satan will come riding his vehicles. Or, or not Satan, but his, his angels will, will come in those vehicles as well. So it's going to be a spectacle. It's going to be something, you know, that will, is going to deceive the whole world. Are you prepared? That's why they're pushing this alien agenda, you know. So not only will it fool is, it, uh, Islamists and Christians and Jews, it will even deceive people of all nations and beliefs, even the, the ancient alien theory, the, theorists. So God bless you. That's all we have time for. Thank you. God bless. Till next time.